Hey Tiger friends, it's Meredith. Hi, how you doing? It's been a while, huh? Yes, it has. On purpose. Um, very purposely, actually. But I wanted to come on here. I've actually attempted to do this little message, like I think this is four or five times now that I've tried to do this. But for whatever reason, either the video gets lost or whatever. Anyway, so I'm trying again. So here I am. Um, today is Sunday, June like 28th. 8th, I believe it is. And I just got home from a work day down at our center. Um, so hence the work look. <laughs> anyway, um, we just got back from working down at the center. We are, we've been, we've been busy. Um, yes, we have been quiet, but we have not been sitting still. Um, we've been quiet on purpose. Um, just because y'all know there's enough going on right now, um, enough talk, enough chatter, enough opinion, enough everything. And I really just didn't want to add, I didn't want to add anything. Um, I wanted to, oh, I threw it right in the dirt. Um, I didn't want to get lost in the mix of any other messages that were going on and I didn't want to add anything and I just, just didn't want to add. Um, but I wanted you all to know that we have been very much pressing into what the Lord will be having us do going forward. We were very much in a um, place of preparation for our ministry and our work and what that will look like and the growth and everything. Um, so over these last months, I just wanted to kind of get you guys up to speed of what we've been doing. Um, Cause you know, obviously we have not been able to serve our ladies like we would like to. Um, but we haven't been sitting still doing nothing. So we've actually been growing our team, which is really cool, um, and growing our services. So we, uh, and I threw it in the dirt again. So we have developed a, for our freedom team, I'm really excited about having that be birthed. Um, there's eight people on that team. It's constructed of some of our board members, um, some uh, some ladies that were on our finance committee. We just kind of pulled them into the freedom team because it just sounds much better than finance committee. Freedom team is awesome. It's powerful. Um, so they're in there. And then also a couple um, new people that have been supporters of us, but now they're actually stepping in and taking an active role of like making things happen in the ministry. So it's really cool. Um, so in the freedom team, we have our board members, Robbie Nickham and Pam Gonzalez. And um, we have members from our finance committee. We had um, sister Esther Hogan. She's doing grant writing for us. Um, Rachel Salem and Larnice Bowen, they've, are, they've come into the freedom team. Um, Katie Warzel is, is new. Um, she's part of the grant writing team, but she's also a... Um, a counselor who specializes in trauma therapy and I was able to sit in on some sessions. I'll get to that in a second. I'll get to that. Um, it's a really cool story. Um, and then also on the freedom team is, uh, Matt and Laura Hoffman and they are leaders for, uh, Freedom Hill Community Church, which is our tribe. Just so incredible to be a part of that community now and watching what the Lord is doing and developing that relationship and everything that's being birthed out of that relationship. And it's just incredible. God's just moving. Um, and then we have Miss Pamela Berry and she is the lead of our freedom team and she's probably our newest um, and just awesome addition to our team. She's got such passion, um, awesome, awesome lady. And I just, I'm so thankful to have each and every one of them on our freedom team. So what the purpose of the freedom team is, is to help us grow um, so we can bring more freedom to the ladies and the guys that we serve. So they raise awareness, they help raise funding, um, they help organize maybe like, you know, fundraisers or different events like that. Um, just helping us get out into the community more and connect and grow our community and our tribe. Um, so, so thankful to have them all on board and actively working with us. Um, we have also um, been finally, I'm so excited, um, bringing our Men of Valor program is coming to life. And that's where I was at today, down at the center. Our Men of Valor team, um, we have finally have guys that have stepped up that want to be a part of leadership and mentorship. We've been praying for this for two years at least. Um, yeah, about two years. And, you know, I knew that God would do it in his timing. And obviously that was right now. Um, so we have some guys that have stepped up. Um, let's see. We have Roland. 
He is one of our leads. Uh, we have Chris. We have Marvin. We have Jack. We have Gabe. I don't, oh, we have Paul. Um, those are our core right now, and we're still recruiting and reaching out. So um, that's coming to life right now, and it's a two-part outreach. So we have our city outreach. Um, we were out working on the backyard today at the Empowerment Center. So the Empowerment Center is for the girls, right? That's where we have our ladies' lunches at, and that is where we house, like, the Scarlet Line outreach. Um, it's their exit route from the neighborhood and from addiction and homelessness and prostitution um, into a better life, into the House of Rahab. Um, so that's the Empowerment Center. Well, the backyard area, um, that is the round table. And that's for the guys, for the men of valor. So it'll take on a similar um, structure as the girls program as far as like the, the food element of it, the word element of it, the mentorship element, the relationship, all that. So um, it's going to be more set up like a backyard barbecue kind of style. So just a guy's pad kind of hangout, really cool, um, rustic, um, just cool, industrial. So we were working on that today. And we will be also um, developing into one of our partnerships with Matt and Laura Hoffman with Freedom Hill. They um, have a church, right? They, run, they are leaders of this church. And they are moving into a new physical location um, up in North County. And we are a part of that. So that's just so, what a blessing. Um, just the, the, the increase of capacity of how we can serve is going to be, it's just gonna be so cool. And even our volunteer opportunities, they're gonna be there's gonna be a lot more opportunities because of this location. So at that location, um, we will be doing our the county outreach for the men of valor. So that's gonna be more like a John school, not more like it is a John school, um, that will be a probation option for a male who is a is arrested and charged with solicitation of commercial sex. So either buying or selling commercial sex. Uh, much like if you have a DUI and you go through a traffic school to reduce your charge and your all that stuff, similar kind of thing. So the men who are charged with that, they pay a fee. The fee goes into the ministry and then they will sit through a class. In that class, it's going to be a two-part class where they will learn about human trafficking and um, who it is that they're purchasing and what happens to these girls and especially what happens to them after their 10-minute Time with them. Um, they walk out of the door and what happens to the girls. So educating them on that. And then the other half of it will be education on what it's doing to them. Um, it's destroying them and they probably aren't even thinking past, let's just fulfill this fantasy really quick. Um, so that is going to happen in North County. So that's two parts of our Men of Valor outreach program. And I'm so, so excited to see that finally come to life, man. It's just incredible. Um, and then we've just been busy here at the house, um, just maintenance stuff and projects and things like that. Um, I redid our fire pit out in the back because it was not a fire pit. It was just a fire hole and they burn stuff in the backyard because it's out in the country and that's what you do. <laughs> so um, we just, you know, redug it out and made it look like something. So it's cute, it's, you know, pa uh, pavers and stuff. It's cute, um, simple. And then um, did a walkway that the girls will come in on and that's where the stepping stones um, go on that walkway. So that's coming to life. Um, and then I'm also in the project process right now. I don't know if you can see that. Yes, you can. That's going to be a floating deck. Ah, it's going to be a floating deck and slash, so sun deck slash worship stage. Um, we had a couple weeks ago, we had a worship day out here with Freedom Hill and um, some of our people's and it was beautiful. We were out in the backyard and it was potluck and we just prayed and worshiped and it was sweet. It was organic. It was presence. It was awesome. And the worship peoples, they've offered to come in and do like little sessions with the girls of just worship out in the backyard. So um, we will have outside worship with the bonfire, make s'mores and just have a sweet night together of praise and worship. So that's what that project is. Um, what else? What else? So I know I'm forgetting things, but I just really wanted to get on here and just say hi and let you guys know that, Hey, we're here <laughs> and, um, we have not been sitting ducks. Oh, I do want to share. Um, one thing that I really gathered personally out of this whole quarantine time, and I'm sure everybody has taken humongous lessons away from this time of life. Okay. I know that. But one thing that 
I'm taking away and that we are actually using as a tool um, was something that just truly, truly rocked me. Um, I really, the first like two weeks of quarantine, I absolutely hated it. Um, it was horrific. I threw massive temper tantrums with God. Um, there were days I was okay. There was days I would bawl my eyes out. There was days I was angry, days that I felt like I was spinning. Like it was just all the gamut of emotions. And I'm sure so many of you did the same type of kaleidoscope of emotions. But one thing I discovered in that time frame is that I have not in my probably entire life, but definitely in my adult life, um, I haven't stopped. I didn't know what that was like to just stop and not push for something, not cr try to create something, not try to think through something. Like there was nothing to do. You just kind of were forced to stop. And I realized I, I literally went through a withdrawal of life. I withdrew from like withdrawal, like addiction withdrawal of life. And it hurt. It was, it was heavy. It hurt. So in that time, like I called this space, my box, right? And in my box, I said, you know, there's, there's moments of laughter in the box. There's tears in the box. There's dancing in the box. There's breakdown in the box. Um, there's all these things inside of the box, but the best thing inside of this box is God. God's with me in this box, right? So prior to um, quarantine, whatever, we were talking about different structures and, and things to do with the girls when they were here at the house and, you know, occupying time and filling their days and, um, you know, not hectic, but just giving, get, giving them things to do every day. So when they would come home at night, they would just be tired and go to sleep. Well, from that, my biggest takeaway was God telling me, no, do not fill their days, empty their days and be with them in the empty because it's not fun. Like these girls, their minds, their everything has been in hyperdrive for so long because they're in survival mode. So they're always on the go. They're always on the hustle. Their mind never shuts off. So to give them the opportunity to retreat. And just be and be still and be still and know that he is God. And it is a crazy, crazy ride to be still. So that's one of the biggest things that we're shifting, um, how we're, how we're handling the house. So, um, it is going to be treated as a retreat, not as a vacation, um, but a retreat. Like if anybody's gone on a retreat before, it, there's purpose in the retreat. You dig deeper. You get to the hidden things. You you reveal things that you haven't talked about. You let God do a thing, right? And so um, it will be presented to the girls of, hey, let's, you know, go on a retreat. Spend some time on yourself, you know, and be there with them. Um, so I'm really excited to see that um, come to life also. So we are going to be doing going back into the center. Our first lunch is going to be this Wednesday, July 1st. Um, and that's just so very perfect because July is Freedom Month. It's our Independence Month. So it's very suiting that our girls get to join us again on Freedom Month. Um, and then we'll do, we'll, you know, open the house back up within the month of July. Um, just kind of reestablishing our connections with the people that we do partner with for service, you know, providing and things like that. So just making sure that we, everything is ready, right? So like I said, we were in a mode of preparation. Um, this whole time has definitely not been a time of planning because planning takes some serious details and timelines. And honestly, right now, we just don't know. Like God is in control of this. You know, I mean, look at, we have a, we have a Sahara dust storm. Why not? Why not? You know, let's throw that in there. And that's something that is definitely coming from, that's from God. God is in control of that. Um, and nothing else can be blamed. You know, the God's doing that one. So um, we're just, we were in a, a moment of preparation so that when it was time, we were ready. And that time is coming. So our first step back is into the center. We've already, you know, been talking with some of the girls. I haven't lost contact with a lot of them. Um, and they're excited to come back. And then, um, yeah, we'll just have the house open in July. So now that this is my official hello, how are you? We are here. We love you. We miss you. Um, I will start adding more updates more often. Um, and hopefully in these updates that we add that it, it brings a a little spark of hope to you guys and a hope of like it smiles and just a break from 
everything else that's going on. I hope we can be, bring that to you. Um, so just wanted to say that and say we're here. I don't want to say we're back because we never left, but we're here and we've been here and um, just waiting on God and God saying, all right, get going. Right. But we're definitely not returning to that same crazy hustle um, chaos that we were in before. This is a whole new, different, amazing, breathtaking, but filling, um, peaceful way that we're going back into the ministry. So I'm excited for that. So um, just wanted to say, hey, um, love you all so much. I thank you all for keeping us included in your lives. Um, thank you for the, those who are still supporting. Thank you guys so much because just because we went through this doesn't mean that the rest of our ongoings hasn't stopped, right? The house is here, maintenance is here, bills are here, um, you know, there's stuff. So thank you. Hold it. Um, thank you for not stopping being on our team and thank you for keeping us in your prayers and um, just reaching out. So yeah, I, I pray blessings over you guys, um, over your families, over your homes, over your finances, um, just that a, a, a deep peace just sweeps over all of you. And uh, you can just rest in knowing that God's in control. And in the end, no matter how, whatever turns out, we win. Okay, we do. Because he's in control. He knows what's going on. So just have trust in that. Have faith in that. And um, I don't want to ramble too much longer. But I wanted to say hello. And I really look forward to just keeping you all updated on what's coming. Because really good things are. So this is Meredith with Tiger Lily Resources, thanking you all again so much, signing off.